Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit 2018. My next guest is David Lee. He is the founder of the Shenzhen Open Innovation Lab. Mr. Lee, thank you for joining us. Thank you, glad to be here. Mr. Lee, to start with, can you take us through the advances in technology of the past 30 years and how it's allowed a technology like AI to blossom? Yeah, well, I think there are three forces uh, which is bring us to where we are today. Uh, we, for every innovation, we need the knowledge, we need a tool to innovate, and we need a production capacity to make it real. Um, I think in the past 30 years, we have s opening up every single one of these stage. Uh, first of all, the opening up of knowledge. With internet, we have a distribution of knowledge. Now today, anyone, anywhere uh, on earth with the simple access to internet can get uh, the AI course and AI education from top university, whether that be Oxford, Cambridge, MIT, Stanford. Uh, so that's opening up of knowledge. And second of all, past 30 years, the big push in the open source software uh, today, every single one of the AI foundational software, TensorFlow, Cafe, everything, they are open source. Uh, and again, anyone with the internet access can download the tool and use it. And the third part, which is uh, what China, and especially my city, Shenzhen, comes into play. So Shenzhen today makes about 90% of the global uh, electronics, especially in the information technology area. So. And in the past 30 years, what happened in Shenzhen is the, it democratized productions. Now, producing the body to uh, carry the, uh, all this information technology is no longer exclusive to big company. Small companies, small maker, two people company, uh, they can come to Shenzhen and take their ideas to realize. Um, so free, coming back is the, we are standing in a very different era. Now, uh, a kid, whether the, this uh, a kid, uh, well, uh, young person, <laughs> uh, 20-something young person, mm. whether or not you are standing in uh, San Francisco, in Geneva, in London, or in Lagos, uh, in Nairobi, in Shanghai, in Shenzhen, you are at the same standing. You have same access to the three open systems. Uh, at this point, we starting to look into uh, thinking about how to drive the new innovations, especially AI. Uh, AI is awesome technology, but one thing people don't talk about AI is the AI makes programming easy. So instead of trying to figure out how to program a computer to do very complicated tasks, to identify a photos, uh, you just teach computers, you give them photos, you give them photo of cats, and tell computer is cat. Uh, you don't have to figure out how to write a program, write an algorithm to describe cat. You only have to give them picture of cat. Uh, and that is actually a powerful tool. It captures human knowledge without the bottleneck of programmers. Um, and from there is the, now we're starting to look at this new combinations. Anyone interested in the knowledge can get the knowledge. Anyone interested in the technology can get a technology. Anyone in figure now uh, a place, a things to embody that solutions uh, can start in a small business. Um, so this, I think is the AI is already a force for good. Uh, and this force can be leveraged by everyone. Um, but I think the discussion today we have is mostly um, still assuming this idea of AI being this cutting edge technology uh, is exclusive to certain people. We are under this assumption it's exclusive to certain people. And that's why we have meeting when we talk about AI for good. We talk about inclusions. We talk about uh, not being evil. But uh, it's really what happened uh, in the past is the, we selectively giving small group of individual too much power, mm. uh, too much concentration of powers uh, in a few of the internet company. People talk about uh, power corrupt, 
and absolute power really just will corrupt anyone. Okay, so, so we've got to be careful to uh, ensure that AI is not too uh, concentrated or does not belong to just a handful of individuals. That's it's very important, important to open up uh, the technology and to, to make sure that everyone has access to it. Yeah, well, I, I would actually take it to the next step and say, well, we are already there. Uh, we have been seeing beautiful projects leveraging AI, uh, not from San Francisco, not from Shanghai, not mm. even from Shenzhen. Uh, we see them in Addis Ababa. Uh, we see them in Nairobi. Um, and these are just genuine people who take this tool, uh, try to do good for their community. And right now, it's the, they already exist. They are already out there. Uh, right now, it's the, we don't see them. They have no visibility. Uh, we're still thinking about the old metaphor of this. Uh, you, are, you have to be certain kind of people, uh, education background, country of origin, uh, where you are doing your things. Uh, there, there seems to still that assumption about AI being these are the creators and controllers of AI. But AI is a generic tool. AI is just like internet. Uh, you broaden the access. Everybody can do something with it. Uh, I think it's important to recognize we are already there. Uh, but the narrative of how we are talking about AI is still on this. Well, this is the this is the the realm of the the the, the exclusive group. And do you think that here at the AI for Good Global Summit we? are taking the right, the right steps to ensure that AI uh, is democratized? Yeah, well, I think they are very interesting. I was sitting through, this is an awesome conference. Uh, I was sitting through different, uh, a, a different discussion. And there actually, you can see very two very distinct um, group of discussions. Uh, those who put the AI on the ground in the actual practice. And this group of people talks about AI as, yeah, it's a nice tool. There's a lot of new use we can do with it, and it's easy. Uh, it's, fr it, it, it's easy, it let me do things I couldn't do before. And so that was those underground discussion, not talking about this uh, scary future of AI, they are like, nice tool. And then there's another group who well, are more about the abstract thinking of AI, but somehow uh, the, a the AI being brought into discussion is not the reality of AI, but the Hollywood version of AI. So uh, a lot of talks about this uh, AI being this new overload, uh, super beings overseeing us. Um, well, I mean, I think most of the experts in the field agree. Uh, the uh, a sentient being AI uh, is not in our lifetime. Uh, it's not for now. It's not for now. <laughs> it, it's not just we cannot build. We, it, it's not just we don't have the resource to build it. We don't even have the knowledge to build it. Mm. Uh, it is going to take uh, another probably decades uh, okay. of research into it. Uh, but we start. That, then that's on the other side. We're starting to worry about the AI in that way. Uh, then, but we lump it together. So it's kind of uh, interesting. Uh, but it's good to have a very mixed interaction between these two. Of course, Mr. Lee, thank you very much. Thank you.